Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Snecker Show. Uh, several hours ago I was having a conversation at work that got me thinking about the workshop and that's normally how it goes near the end of the day. Any kind of conversation about anything makes me start thinking about the workshop, but this was actually relevant. So uh, I was talking to somebody about a piece of software that was being developed and uh, there were two conflicting uh, opinions from different stakeholder groups. On one side, some people were saying that, uh, that uh, given the absolute basic problem that the software was intended to solve, it was doing too much, it was too complicated, and it was trying to achieve too many things that weren't necessary. On the other hand, we had a user group that was saying the software did not do some basic things that they needed it to do, and uh, didn't uh, take into consideration some of the things that needed to be achieved later, so it wasn't meeting the requirements. And um, so there, there are two ways to look at it. One is you don't want to overcomplicate things, and the other is that you don't want to undercomplicate things. And, and the reason that relates to the workshop is that I've, I've seen some comments in my channel and others, and also heard some, uh, some comments from in-person discussions where uh, people say something to the effect of, well, I, I could do the stuff that you do if I had all of those tools and, and a big giant workshop. And I want you to just... Uh, if, if that's the way that you think, flush that idea from, from your memory right now and never think like that again. I want to emphasize, underscore, bold, uh, that uh, things like Craig Jigs and Incra systems and power tools in general are relatively new to the woodworking scene. Craftsmen have been building amazing artwork and, and, uh, and functional woodworking products for, for long before electricity even hit the scene. So you don't need uh, a whole lot of power tools and a huge shop and a lot of expen expensive equipment to do woodwork. Uh, one of the main things that you can do to expand your shop if you have a very basic or small shop is start building jigs. And here I have my table covered with a variety of jigs. I have some behind me. The whole shop is filled with jigs. Um, there are a lot more that I haven't built, a lot more that I would like to build, and maybe I'll do some more videos on, on some of these. I've already posted a few videos to the channel on some of the jigs that I built earlier. Uh, but I just wanted to talk through a few of these things just to give you some ideas of, of how you could expand your shop. So let's start out with um, something basic. You probably have at least one of these in your garage, and if you don't, you should go out and get one. It's just a simple handsaw, nothing really too fancy about this, and you wouldn't think about this thing really being a, uh, a precise woodworking tool, but it can be a precise woodworking tool with a minor modification. Well, let's get rid of that, because that one is dull from cutting PVC pipe. Here is another handsaw that has uh, just two, two blocks of 2x4 scrap wood clamped on there at a consistent depth, approximately a quarter of an inch. So now let's say I wanted to make some uh, some dados in a piece of wood, you know, cut out a groove like that right there. Uh, it's kind of challenging with a regular handsaw because when you're making the cut, uh, you, you have to look around the back and, you know, mark your lines very carefully. But Let's say I wanted to make several cuts about this depth that were uh, exactly one quarter of an inch deep. So I could take another piece of wood and, uh, uh, a small little thing, uh, put on, I don't even need that. So uh, let's say this was my guide right here and I clamp it onto this piece of wood and I want to cut out this little groove there. All I have to do is take this, this uh, saw with a jig, move it up to my guide board, and start making my cut until I hit the bottom and the, and the 2x4 is bottom out. So now this regular old handsaw is a piece of precise woodworking equipment that can be used to make dados uh, or rabbits or whatever. So it's, it's kind of a cool modification and you don't need a table saw or a router or any other expensive tools to do it. Um, as long as I have it in my hands, this is something that I use for my router. Uh, a router is one of the most versatile tools in the workshop. Uh, if, if you had nothing else, no power tools whatsoever, I would recommend getting a router uh, in the beginning. You can use a router to uh, you know, do all the typical edge details on wood, round over corners, and then cut profiles, uh, cut cabinet doors, but you can also use a router to replace a jointer. If you set up a sled and a guide for you know, running a router down a piece of wood to plane it flat, you can use a router to uh, do a lot of what a bandsaw would do by setting up a circle jig and running it around on a pivot point. You can use a router to cut dados that you would normally use a dado jig uh, or a dado blade for in a table saw. I mean, uh, you can buy a cheap trim router for for a hundred bucks. Well, you can go cheaper, but you get a good trim router for uh, for a hundred bucks or so. And um, a, a dado blade is going to cost you a hundred bucks for a cheap one, a, a, a low quality dado blade. A good one's going to cost two or three hundred bucks. So uh, this is a jig I made for my router 
and uh, just push it through there and cut some dados and a piece of wood. Solved the problem they had at the time. Ooh, also, um, if you have a router but don't have a lathe, lathe is a pretty expensive piece of equipment, you can use a router, uh, set it up on a jig. So let's see. Take this uh, basic tool right here and put in a straight bit and set up some kind of a piece of wood that would hold your, your bowl or whatever piece of wood on a, on a pivot at a 90 degree angle and then set up a guide for your router mounted onto a, you know, some kind of a, a vertical system like this and you could use your router to cut a profile for a bowl. So that's how to take a, a really simple piece of equipment that costs 100 bucks and use it to replace a jointer or replace the need for a jointer, a planer, uh, a lathe, and a dado blade and a table saw. So again, jigs can expand your capabilities beyond the tools that you normally have in your shop. So let's run down a few more of these real quick. Here is one of my oldest and simplest, I don't even know if you call this a jig, it's a block of wood. It's a sanding block. So you have sandpaper, right, and, and you're you know, sanding the wood by hand and you can leave divots and it can be uneven. You take a block of wood and wrap the sandpaper around it and now your sanding is going to be a lot smoother and flatter, which is especially good for things that you're going to finish with the polyurethane, anything that might catch the light. So this thing's about 20 years old. I'm sure I can make something a lot better than this, but it's been working for that long and I don't feel the need to replace it right now. It would take me 30 seconds to do so if I, if I wanted to. Here's another one that's 20 or 25 years old. Um, when I first started using my really small pieces of scrap wood for, uh, for making candle holders, uh, I found that when I was gluing the pieces together for a candle holder blank, you know, you get the glue on there and put it together and clamp it and everything starts to move because of the, the lubrication provided by the glue and it's really hard to keep everything aligned. So I just uh, glued together a couple pieces of wood there and put another block on the end and then I could take all of my uh, little pieces of scrap and align them on the jig and then clamp it all together and it just made it a lot easier to make my candle holder blanks that I was going to put in the lathe. Uh, all right, so I'm going to run through the rest of these pretty quickly because I don't want to spend a lot of time on, on the individual details. If you click on the channel icon, I do have videos posted about several of these. Uh, for example, here is a jig for the table saw that allows me to cut dowels out of uh, any, any uh, square piece of wood. And you know, I'm not going to buy a dowel cutting machine, but why would I do that? All I have to do is put this on the table saw. And the cool thing is that this could also be adapted to work with a router. If you have a router but not a table saw, I could do this with a circular saw mounted underneath. That would work just as well. I could even do this if I uh, attached a, a, a knife on the end. I could literally make this thing work with an old kitchen butter knife that I sharpen an edge on. So, uh, you know, you don't have the tools, you don't have the power, power equipment, uh, you don't have the space in your shop. Build something that you can make dowels with using a butter knife. Right? It's, it's really not too hard. You just got to look around your shop and use a little bit of ingenuity and come up with some cool ideas. Uh, let's see, what else we got? This is a jig for the kitchen. Uh, it's just a prototype. Uh, you know, I just did this real quick and super glued some pieces on there. But the whole point of this thing is that you got a bread machine because I love bread, uh, love carbs. But my my uh, my wife doesn't like to to slice the bread because she, she's not a woodworker, not the you know the doesn't get into all the precision stuff. So um, she always ends up with the slices of bread different thicknesses. So all this thing is is a piece of wood block on the end. I, I would like to make that adjustable. And then some guides here. It's supposed to have two on this side, but I broke one off for something or other. And uh, the way that this works is you slide your loaf of bread up until it hits the block. And then you put your knife in the, the jig and slice the bread. And then you slide it up and repeat. And you end up with perfect slices. And what's next? I, uh, I got a drill press. And it's my second drill press. The first one is real small. And I don't remember what happened with that. But uh, it was... Kind of getting kind of frustrating trying to hold things on the drill press so I just took a piece of scrap wood put some holes through it and that's my drill press fence it's it's a piece of wood with a couple uh, little uh, knobs on there you can use wing nuts I mean, this thing is not really that impressive but I've been using it for 10 years or so I haven't felt the need to replace it yet except for when I was building my king size bed and I needed a right angle guide for the uh, for the drill press, so I made this one, and now all of a sudden my drill press was useful for right angle drilling. I have this one for, there's a video on this one, uh, for um, flattening the bottom of wooden bowls. 
because I don't have an expensive chuck for my lathe. I don't even have an expensive lathe. It's a, it's a smaller one. It's a mini lathe. So when I'm cutting big bowls, I have to put screws, heavy screws in and through the chuck into the wood. And then I have to clean off the bottom after. So I built that jig. I have a bandsaw and I made a circle cutting jig for the bandsaw that's, that's adjustable. So I can do uh, different sizes of circles. It just slides on there, pop in the wood, spin it around, and, and there's my circle. I'm going to do a video on this one later because I have an idea of how to make this a, uh, a no marking uh, circle cutting jig. This one has a pin in the middle, so you end up with a little hole in the center of the wood. But the point is, it expanded the capabilities of my bandsaw. And that was capable because the bandsaw met some basic requirements in the middle that allowed it to be expanded. Um, I have a inexpensive grinder that I got a long time ago and uh, I have a lot of tools that need to be sharpened so I put together this guide that goes on the grinder I adjust a screw here for the angle and, and that can also be used for the angle so I can put my cutting tools on there and ride them along this guide and end up with uh, perfectly sharp edges and let's see this one was used for a drum sander because I, I was making some wooden rings and I had to sand some really thin pieces of wood that were uh, kind of rough so I made this guide that fit on the, to put a, a screw into the table and then I could adjust the, uh, the, the width with the drum sander next to it and then just put a clamp on the other side and then I had a, a nice drum sander for small pieces of wood because I'm not going to buy a $3,000 big commercial drum sander that's going to eat up space in my shop. And this, this is a nice one. Uh, I have saw horses. I don't have a lot of outfeed roller tables and there's really no point in filling up your shop with both saw horses and outfeed roller tables. Uh, all you need is a couple of these cheap rollers that you can get online and then it fits right over your saw horse and now my saw horse is an outfeed roller and I have, I have a bunch of those just for putting on the table saw, the band saw, whatever. You might have seen those in some of the other videos I've done. And behind me I have a few other things. One is for flattening boards in the thickness planer because I have a six inch joiner and I needed to flatten wider boards. Uh, there is a guide for my grand, uh, Grandberg mill so that I can uh, use my chainsaw to cut boards out of logs. And as you can see, I've, I have more wood than I'm going to use anytime soon. I have my uh, dust collection system that I modified to make it a little bit more efficient, turned it into a two-stage system. And here is one of my, my favorites. I have a table saw sled that is used for cutting perfect 90-degree cuts in a table saw. Uh, it really made this miter saw obsolete because... Let's face it, as a woodworker, probably 99% of the cuts that you're going to make are 90 degrees. And all you want is square 90 this way and square 90 that way. Um, so this, this thing is great for doing a lot of complicated angled cuts. But if you're just cutting straight boards, you can do it with a table saw. And if you don't have a, a table saw, guess what? Put this thing on some saw horses, mount a circular saw underneath and now you have somewhat of a table saw there made out of a circular saw as long as you have a good quality circular saw with a nice flat base so uh, the point is again to reiterate don't get discouraged about your capabilities don't ever think that you can't build uh, excellent woodwork just because you don't have a lot of tools or a lot of equipment every woodworker worth the salt knows how to build jigs and jigs are really the the the, the absolute most important thing that you can have in your shop. You can have the simplest of tools and you can build a variety of jigs for it to do all kinds of incredible things. I mean this could be modified to, to cut dados, it could be modified to cut tenons, uh, and the basic requirements were just for a simple table saw. But somebody was smart enough to take this basic table saw and put in these T-track slots here and that made it possible to expand it to use for so many other capabilities. And the same thing with the fence. Basic table saw fence, all it has to do is guide the wood straight, but somebody took the time to put these, these little slots in the side there, and now it's adaptable for, for uh, that thing, the, uh, the dowel cutting jig or a sacrificial fence. Or, um, so go out to your shop, you know, if you have limited space and limited tools, Take a look at each individual thing that you use in your shop. Each one of your saws, your jigsaw, your, your, uh, your table saw, your hand saw, your file, and just think about different ways that you could modify that to expand its capabilities so it functions as well as a dedicated piece of equipment might. And uh, that's really a lot of the, the fun of woodworking is making your own equipment and making your own uh, existing equipment more capable. So uh, in conclusion, uh, thanks for watching and more importantly, have fun expanding your shop.